Um, a couple of our other people got called away. Um, we were supposed to have scripture read in four different languages, and so we're, we're hoping that it'll be read in at least two different languages. Uh, Juvie got called in to work today, so he was my assisting minister. And um, Celia is sick, so keep her in your prayers. Um, I want to explain a couple of things. Let's see. So worship, we have been using reusable bulletins, and as I said in my letter that went out to um, everybody, um, this season we're going to go back to using our hymnals. So if you turn to the front of your hymnal, um, to page 175, that's where you'll find our worship service. And then throughout the service, those bigger numbers um, are the hymns, and they're in the second half of your hymnal. And we still have a bunch of ribbons that somebody could sort through and untangle, and they could be put in back in our hymnals. So if anybody wants to take on that project, please let me know. Um, we're going to, we decided that using the Hispanic setting, um, we would try to sing one of the pieces is actually in Spanish. And why would we do that? Oh my goodness. Well, we live in a county where a lot of people um, come here and they're, they're learning English. And um, this is a way to have a little bit of empathy towards the struggles that they're experiencing. So uh, we have a little choir that's gonna lead us through. They're gonna sing a special song later in the service, but they will lead us during this time. You don't have to get up now. But I'm just gonna say the words for you and if Anybody here speaks Spanish fluently and wants to correct me later, please do that. <laughs> I just have a few years. Um, so, repeat after me. Señor, señor, ten piedad. Señor, señor, ten piedad. Ten piedad. That's the, the big ten piedad. Ten piedad. De nosotros. De nosotros. And then we repeat that. Señor, señor, ten piedad. Señor, Señor, ten piedad, ten piedad de nosotros. Ten piedad de nosotros. Then, when we're singing this musically, this part comes really fast, so you kind of got to be ready. Cristo, Cristo, ten piedad. Cristo, Cristo, ten piedad de nosotros. Cristo, Cristo, ten piedad. Cristo, Cristo, ten piedad de nosotros. Oh, sorry. Ten piedad de nosotros. Ten piedad de nosotros. Let me sing it again. All right, Carissa, let's try it. You want me to play the part or just play? Why don't you just play the notes this time? Señor, señor, ten piedad, ten piedad de nosotros. Señor, señor, ten piedad. something that um, I wrote about, I can't remember when I wrote about this, um, in a letter or in my pastor's report to the church council, but this future direction, please take home and take a look at it. This is an initiative from our church-wide organization, the ELCA, the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, and it's something that council is kind of using as a guide as we think about 
you know, coming out of the last two years. Who do we want to be? What are we called to do? Where is the spirit leading us? So um, I thought that everybody should have access to that. Thanks to everybody who came. Um, we had a great time on Wednesday. Who knew that like lawn games and food trucks could be so easy and so fun? So thanks to the stewardship team. Yes. <laughs> thank you to the weather for cooperating that day. Um, so that was great. And um, the next kind of outing thing we have is Steve Van Adder and I will be at West Park. June 21st, the first day of summer, to bless your bicycles or other wheeled things. So um, bring your bicycle or your RV or your skateboard or whatever you want to have blessed, and we'll have popsicles. And uh, Christian Ed meets today after worship at 11, and then I'll meet with the uh, high school kids going to Minneapolis right after that. Is there anything else I'm forgetting? Okay. okay. Um, so I don't usually do, I have great assisting ministers, I want to give them a break today um, since they helped me out last week, so see how I do getting through the service. Um, so let's stand and face the font in our narthex, and we'll begin with a call to worship, <clears throat> printed in your bulletin. Jesus pro promised. I will ask the Father, he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you. The spirit of truth the world cannot accept as they do not see or know him, but you know him. He lives with and within you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Let's sing hymn 396 in your hymnal, Spirit of Gentleness.
continue with the greeting on page 175 in front of your hymnal. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. The resurrection of your Son offers life to all the peoples of earth. By your Holy Spirit, kindle in us the fire of your love, empowering our lives for service and our tongues for praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us, in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes. Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. 
Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. And since I am reading this in English instead of Swahili, um, let's read Psalm 104 responsibly by whole verse. How manifold are your works, O Lord. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. In honor is the sea, great and wide, with its swarms too many to number, living things so small or great. There go the ships to and fro, and Leviathan, which you made for all the sport of it. All of them look to you to give them their you give it to them, they gather it, you open your hand, and they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to the dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created, and so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. O oh, Lord, rejoice in all your works. You look at the earth and it trembles. You touch the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my need. May these words of mine please God. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Then Vesha der Geist Gottes tritt, die sind Gottes Kinder, denn ihr habt nicht einen nektischen Geist anfangen, dass ihr auf Abrahams fruchten müsstet, sondern ihr habt einen kindlichen Geist anfangen, durch welchen wir rufen, aber, liebe Vater, der Geist selbst gibt zumindest unseren Geist, dass wir Gottes Kinder sind. Sind wir aber Kinder, so sind wir auch Orben, nämlich Gottes Erben, und mit Beren Christi wenn anders wir mit Leben, auf das wir auch mit so Herrlichkeit erben werden. Word of God, Word of Life. Ibyo 
Nabat Giyer, yo lo sé. Please be seated. And would the children come forward for a minute? Okay, Abby, what was your question this morning? Um, why is it all red? Why is it all red? Yeah, okay, so have you gotten some sense yet? Any themes? Anything we've sung a lot about already, congregation? Yeah. The Holy Spirit, yeah, the Holy Spirit. Oh, okay. So, um, yes, and we have red. What is on, what symbols do you see on all of our red pyramids? Raise your hand and I'll give you the microphone. Okay. Fire? Fire, yes. Water? Where do you see water? Well, I don't know. Maybe. What about this thing? What's this? Do you know what that is? Fire. Show this thing. Um, Who said a bird? Bird. Bird. A bird. Which specific, specific kind of bird? Dove. Nice. Okay. So we got fire. So the fire, the tongues of fire, um, you know how you can picture a campfire coming up, right? And there's little tongues of fire. So that's why red, because fire is red. What else looks kind of like shimmery fire in our sanctuary? Yeah. What's, isn't that, this is pretty, right? Yeah, we just love it. And where were the other doves that you passed on the way in? Um, you see them? Yeah. Out above the, what's that thing out there? The baptismal font. Mm -hmm. All the doves hanging out there. Okay, so let me see your tongues. All right, there we go. See, tongues of fire rested on all of these people in Jerusalem. And then they were able to speak in such a way that even though they were speaking all different languages, like we heard a little bit this morning, they were able to understand. So see, it's a double use of the word tongues. Tongues of fire and then the tongues that we were, people were speaking with. So that's, that's, the, that's Pentecost. And in your bulletins, um, your kids' bulletins, sometimes we talk about this being We'll see what the, if the congregation is smart enough to answer this question. The birthday of what? The church. The church, yes. So sometimes, I don't know if Penelope is doing coffee hour, she brought a birthday cake. Cupcakes. Oh, cupcakes, okay. Cupcakes. So yes, yes, so birthday of the church. Now no, nobody will pay attention to the rest of the worship because we're just <laughs> excited about the cupcakes. Okay, so we can sing happy birthday church during fellowship time. What do you think of that? Yeah. Okay. Thanks for coming up. Now you know Pentecost. I came across this letter from a pastor while cleaning files this week. It begins, Dear members, for many months, I have given much earnest prayer and thought to the matters that have sorely distressed our congregation. Since the annual meeting, I have sought to gather the opinions of many members to determine if a solution was possible. As I gave serious study to these matters after Easter, I came to the conclusion that a solution could be found if a majority of our members sincerely desired. The conflict must be some hot bit an issue, right? The letter sounds contemporary in many ways. But it was written in 1954 to the members of Soldier Lutheran, the church I served in Iowa before coming here. At issue, a beloved country church building and a potential new church building in town. It was a reminder to me that church conflict and questions about who we are and what we're supposed to be doing are not new. They existed even during what some people thought was the end of the golden age of Protestantism in this country. That all may seem like small comfort if you have read headlines about our brothers and sisters in the Southern Baptist Convention the last several weeks. Lest we think that our own denomination is not having struggles, please pray for the ELCA Lutheran Sisters and Brothers in the Sierra Pacific Synod of Northern California and Nevada. They have been through so much 
not too much to explain in this sermon, but trust me when I say that they need our prayers. And we are one body with many members, and when one part of the body is in pain, we all hurt. Trouble, of course, is not contained within the church community. There are many days when these times feel unprecedented. The world is a mess. I have been watching an old crime show, which aired during my teenage years at first, and I'm astonished by the relevancy of the themes. Gun violence, children dying because parents depend only on faith healings, immigrants fleeing Central America's Northern Triangle, fights about who controls a woman's body, and systemic racism. It's all there. What is a community of people trying to follow Jesus supposed to do exactly? Which issues do we address and how? Those are the big issues facing society. What about our families and workplaces and our own interpersonal circles? What should take priority? How are we to live? We say we are followers of Jesus. What precisely does that look like here and now? We might think it would be so much easier if Jesus would come again and simply tell us how to live and what to do. We would listen, right? 50 days after Easter, it's easy to forget the way of life Jesus taught, the reign of God he began to usher in, the way of life he lived each day actually cost him his life. It is his very absence that he speaks about and anticipates in today's gospel reading from John. He is slowly and deliberately preparing his followers for his absence. In his farewell speech, Jesus calls the Holy Spirit the paraclete, sometimes translated as counselor. Throughout the farewell speech, the paraclete is depicted as a teacher and a witness. It is with these actions of teaching and witnessing that the paraclete will form and shape Christian community. We heard today that the paraclete will remind you of all that I have said to you. This is helpful because I don't think we often consider the Holy Spirit's role as one who reminds or who causes us to remember as a community. After Jesus' resurrection from the dead, the disciples remembered what Jesus had said and done, and they were brought to deeper understanding and faith. In other words, the paraclete does not teach new things, but keeps Jesus' own teachings alive in the post-resurrection community. Later in the farewell speech, Jesus says, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. Here Jesus points to the importance of fresh encounters with the words of Jesus. These encounters will be given at the time of need, not in advance of that time. Jesus identifies the paraclete as the medium for those encounters. 2,000 years later, these descriptions of the paraclete should give us comfort and assurance. We also are not left orphaned, even though Jesus is not present as he was with his first disciples. The paraclete enables past, present, and future to converge in the life of the church. The paraclete enables the words of Jesus to resound afresh in ever-changing circumstances. On the one hand, the paraclete's role is essentially conserving. The paraclete enables the Christian community, including in our time, to reach back to the teachings of Jesus and remember, to bring Jesus' teachings to life afresh with new understanding. That's the work I try to do every time I step into this space, to bring Jesus' teachings to life with new understanding. But it's also what was on display when our confirmants told their faith stories. It's the work we do on Monday mornings right now as we study Luke's gospel. And it is the work our church council and teams do when they read the words of Jesus and ask how those words inform our mission today. At the same time, the parakeet the paraclete's role is also creative. The paraclete enables the word of Jesus to move forward from its moment in history to the present life of the church. The paraclete gives new meanings to the teachings of Jesus as the changing circumstances of faith communities and the world demand. Several members have helped me remember the important role of our imaginations in this moment. What they are speaking of is this creative role of the paraclete, which we can call on. Not every situation we face today as individuals or as communities was imagined in the Gospels. One teacher wrote, biblical stories often refuse to provide all the information we readers desire. 
but that void of information opens a space in which we can read our lives into the story. The paraclete ensures that there is an ongoing communication between Jesus and the contemporary communities of faith. The paraclete's teaching, witness, and interpretation can take many forms in the life of the faith community. One scholar wrote, story and interpretation, history and theology are inseparably linked in the life of Jesus and the church. It is incumbent upon the faith community, us, to engage in conversations between the story of Jesus and our own stories. The goal is not a pure understanding of church doctrine. It is, in the end, about how those early disciples and future followers of Jesus will live. The disciples can still love Jesus, but not by clinging to cherished memories of him or by retreating into their private experience of him. Instead, they and we continue to love Jesus by doing his works and by keeping his commandments. When we live what Jesus has taught us and demonstrated in his own life, then we will find ourselves once again in Jesus' love. In a new book called On Living Well, Pastor Eugene Peterson writes, Jesus was not what today is called a good communicator, the kind of person whom advertising firms hire to write copy. That is because, as it turns out, Jesus is primarily interested not in communication, but rather in communion. His chief concern is not that we get a new piece of information, but that we become new people. And to do that, he needs us to get involved, asking questions, wondering who we are and where we stand, curious and intrigued, on tiptoe, ready to take risks. The paraclete we celebrate today is with us still, teaching and witnessing, reminding us how to be in communion. We live in turbulent times, but that does not change the fact that the love of God is present and remains our ultimate guide as we ask questions, wonder who we are, remain curious, and ready to take risks. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Okay. Okay, we're singing a song that is new to us, but we all know the tune, so don't be afraid. Um, we all love... Gustav Holtz Jupiter, so please stand and we will sing hymn 944, O Spirit All Embracing.
we continue with the Nicene Creed, and you have to turn back a few pages to 104 in your hymnal. With the whole people of God, let us confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church people in need, and all of creation. Holy living one, holy moving one, burst open our locked doors, and by your spirit drive us out into the world proclaiming your mighty deeds. Direct our words and actions, trusting the advocate abiding in and among us. God in your mercy, hear our prayer. Feed and care for creatures that remain hidden to us yet contribute to the vibrancy of your creation. Train us to interact with creation from a place of wonder, awe, and reverence. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Send your spirit to places where language is a barrier to justice and mercy for those who seek it. Bless the work of translators, interpreters, and teachers. Promote understanding for the sake of those longing for true freedom and peace. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort all who live in constant fear and any who are suffering. Remind them that your spirit has made them your children and that they are never far from your glory. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, all bishops, pastors, missionaries, and other ministers of the gospel, as you did for Boniface, whom we commemorate today, foster our relationships with partner synods and local ministry partners, that our visions and actions are spirit-led. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gather your people across regions, nations, and lands. Root our common life in the life, death, and resurrection of Christ. And by your spirit, bind us together with all the saints who have gone before us. God, in your mercy. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Share a sign of peace. Uh, we take an offering. Um, we have offering plates in the back of the sanctuary, and you can give online. Please be seated for a musical offering.
Exactly. Please stand. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possession. <clears throat> Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. Fulfilling the promise of the resurrection, you pour out the fire of your spirit, uniting in one body people of every nation and tongue. And so, with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God of the universe, your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast, grace our table with your presence. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. With your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy trinity, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Now the gifts of God for the people of God. Come to the banquet, for all is now ready. All are welcome, for Jesus invites us. Please be seated. So we have some songs to sing as we distribute communion. Um, please wait for the accompanists and worship leaders to commune first. And for this season, we would like four household units around the altar at a time. 
Children and adults, of course, are both welcome. Um, wine is on the outside of our tray and grape juice is in the center. And please let me know if you need a gluten-free wafer. Gifts of God for the people of God.
as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and salvation and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Our sending hymn is 627 in your hymnal, O Day Full of Grace. 